Welcome. My name is Christopher Paisley. I'm a Philadelphia public school teacher. I run a YouTube channel called Inside White Fragility. I also have a website of the same name. And I'm starting a new series, and this is number one in the series. The series is called Debunking D'Angelo, as in Robin D'Angelo. And today's question is this. Are white teachers racially illiterate? Not only do we all have opinions, but they tend to be very emotionally charged, and that has nothing to do with the, whether they're informed or not. I have an opinion on virtually everything that does not make them informed. I, I don't believe you can grow up or spend any significant time in the United States without developing opinions on racism, and they will be emotional and strongly held. And again, that has nothing to do with whether they're informed. Uh, and in fact, if you are white and you have not devoted years of sustained study, struggle, and focus on this topic, your opinions are necessarily very limited. Now, now, how can I say that when I don't know most of the people in this room? Uh, and this, of course, is the first thing that tends to trigger white fragility, generalizing about white people. Um, as a sociologist, I'm really comfortable generalizing about white people. <laughs> Um, social life is predictable and patterned, you know, in, in really observable ways, and we've got to grapple with those patterns. But I can say this, that, that your opinions without sustained study struggle focus, or, you know, mistake making, relationship building, repair, uh, they're superficial because nothing, nothing in society gives you the information you need to have more than that. So the question is, are white people racially illiterate? Do they know what they're talking about, okay, when it comes to race? Do they have any authority whatsoever? Now, I'd like to start with myself and then move forward. Okay, so I've been teaching in Philadelphia public schools for 25 years. My father taught in the Philadelphia School District for 36 years, all right? I'm a coach. I've been coaching in Philadelphia for 25 years. I'm a certified counselor. I have a multi, I have a, a master's degree in multicultural education. I was a mentor. I worked for the Philadelphia Youth Network. So I've been on, you know, the playgrounds with the kids in all the areas of the cities. I've been in the basements of the churches. I've been on the tracks. I've been in the locker rooms. I've been in the classrooms. I've taught summer school. I live in the city of Philadelphia. My neighbors are people of color. I'm diverse. But according to D'Angelo, interestingly, because I'm a white male and I live in supposedly a privileged white bubble, I am not an authority on race. But let's look at education just as a way to try and analyze, is our statement accurate or is it based in propaganda? So these numbers are from the National Center for Education Statistics. Okay, In America today, there are 3.2 million teachers. Of these 3.2 million teachers, over 80% are white. So if you do the math and you round it, there's about two and a half million white teachers in the United States, okay? Of all the schools in the United States, they're broken down into three categories, urban, suburban, and rural. There are approximately one million white teachers in the United States who teach in these urban settings, Detroit, Philadelphia, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago. And of all of these teachers, over 63% of them are, have been there for 10 years or more. 25% of them have been there for over 20 years, like me. So you're talking 63% of a million, let's just round it, let's say a half a million. You have a half a million white teachers who have been teaching for over 10 years in these urban areas. And we're talking dealing with the kids, dealing with the parents, dealing with the faculty, dealing with the community, coaching, counseling, mentoring. Of all these people, what does D'Angelo say about those people? Do they, have they undergone years of sustained study, struggle, and focus? I'd say yes. I'd say absolutely yes. When you're, when you're dealing with students for more than 10 years and sometimes 20 years, when you're teaching and coaching and mentoring and counseling students and their parents and their families and their communities and their neighborhoods, I would say yes. That would be considered sustained study, focus, and struggle with the kids, especially because these teachers, like me, we care. We care more than most people do. And people like us, we're, we're constants in these kids' lives because a lot of these kids, 
they don't have parents or they have one parent or they live with grandparents. It's true and it's a shame. And they're constantly moving around. And who is the one constant in these children's lives? It's the teachers. Okay? But according to D'Angelo, we're not authorities. We're, 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 we're ignorant. We're racially illiterate. Okay? According to her, we're racially illiterate. We don't know what we're talking about. Our opinions are either uninformed, misinformed, or just straight come out of ignorance. Now think about that for a moment. Someone like me and a half a million other white teachers in urban areas who've been there for over 10 years, we're considered uninformed. And it's true because people like me and these other teachers, we go to these workshops led by Robin D'Angelo, led by people who are experts on implicit bias and microaggressions and white privilege. And we sit there and we sit in these lectures and we sit in these workshops that are supposed to be there to make us better teachers and to help children. And what do they tell us at these workshops? We sit there and they basically say, you're white, you're privileged, you live in a white supremacist culture, all of these racial disparities and all of this oppression is your fault. And then when someone like me says, Time out. This is a little bit divisive. We're dividing people into groups. We're dividing people into oppressors and oppressed, privileged and targeted, white and black. Maybe we should do something like, let's try and come together and look at the ways we're the same. Now, we can still talk about ways to end systemic racism and we can talk about ways to make things better. But why don't we focus on ways to bring us together so we can get to know each other, so we can bond and Certain things like the fact that I'm not an authority or I have no idea about this, when I raise my hand or I question or I challenge, it's interesting. We're pretty much shut down. We're pretty much told that we're acting out of ignorance. We don't know what we're talking about. We just need to be quiet. We need to listen. We're, we're being offensive to people of color, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's not a very good situation set up for communication. It's not a good situation set up for co-creation. And to be quite honest, when D'Angelo says that whites are privileged and they're ignorant and they're um, racially illiterate, if you look at the numbers, it's not necessarily true. And a lot of it is based in propaganda. 